back with another episode of Back on My Bullshit. So I'm gonna give y'all a quick little video on what can happen to you if you one of them kleptos. If you somebody who got sticky fingers and you find yourself in a penitentiary or a county jail setting, what you can expect. Now, things are a little different depending on each state, but one thing is pretty much unanimous. And that is, if you put your little sticky claws on any of my shit without my permission, I'm gonna act with as much violence as possible. Now, y'all gotta excuse me. I'm trying to run to the bank. I'm the manager of my little subway, so they be having me run around off company time with no company gas car. But anyways, so today we're going to talk about a situation I seen happen to a girl, not a woman, because she was a girl. She was 18, 19 years old, probably her first or second time in prison. We, so I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, Raleigh, the Women Correctional Institution in Raleigh, North Carolina right now. This is where I was when this happened. So I was in reception. Now, if you have not been to the Women's Correctional Facility in Raleigh in over five or six years, you probably don't know that we do not wear, <laughs> they used to make the inmates there wear pink and blue fuzzy flannel dresses at nighttime. But you know, with it being a Bible belt, them people not liking the LGB to the QIA anymore or too much. They thought there was a little too much frisking going on under them damn gowns. So now we don't wear the gowns at night. We wear just some little shorts and a, a little basketball short shirt or whatever. But I was on reception at this point. And so was this girl. So we were wearing pink uniforms. Now I wear like a pink little top with your jeans. This girl decided she was going to put on a jacket and truck her ass on down the hill. Now, at the bottom of this hill, because it's a fucking hill for real, there's probably about 30 buildings on the compound there. And uh, at the bottom of the hill is three large buildings that are broke down into two sections with four buildings of peace in each or four dorms each so uh the one at the bottom on the right used to be the drug unit you could not be in that building unless you had drug charges it was like a drug program that's what it is well this girl knew somebody down in the hill at the bottom of the hill so she decided to put on a jacket and risk an escape charge by not being in the place she's supposed to be at with other clothing on. If you put on anything other than what the state has issued to wear, then you are trying to disguise yourself and in their eyes you just might be trying to plan in a scuppy. Shit, they don't know. You got some officers who know. Actually, I take that back. All the motherfucking officers know that if they catch you with a jacket on trying to cover up your pink to go down the hill it's because you're just trying to go see somebody and be somewhere you ain't supposed to be most of them will yell at you bitch gripe complain moan groan send you about your way but then you got a lot of them who are fucking assholes and they take that job too serious that power done went up to their big ass foreheads so them are the motherfuckers that's gonna try to get you with escape and being in an unauthorized area and all that dumb ass shit well, this girl, she decided she was going to put the jacket on, risk the escape charge, risk the bullshit, and she was going to truck down to the bottom of that hill. She went on down there, went into somebody's building and into, into somebody's pod, and this young lady stole a radio. Radios in North Carolina, they like 13 to $20. I can't really remember. And then you got to buy headphones if you want any headphones that are any good other than them little piece of shit plastic things that hurt your ears like a motherfucker. So, um, she goes and proceeds to steal this radio and headphones. Comes on back up the hill, takes the little sweater off and goes on about her business. 
problem with being a criminal is a lot of criminals like to brag and boast about what they've done. Now let me tell you, there are no friends in the penitentiary. There are no friends in prison. I don't care if it's male or female. Ain't nobody your friend. You might go in a five-year bid, you might find one real friend. Somebody that you can tell everything, a confidant, you can just tell them whatever. This hat make my ears look like a fucking elf. Anyways, you might find that one person that you can bond with, but you still don't break down your deepest, darkest secrets to these people. If it's some shit that you know you done and you ain't trying to get caught for it, just keep it to yourself. Don't even tell God. Just keep it to yourself, okay? So this girl goes and brags, tells somebody. I don't know if she was bragging. Let me tell you that back. I don't know if she was bragging or if she had asked so many people to use their radio that when she just popped back up with a radio, everybody's like, yo, where the fuck you get a radio at? Because the first thing on your mind, you, we're in reception. That means we ain't been here longer than six weeks. That means none of us know each other enough to be telling enough about anything to any motherfucking body. Which means we do not know each other. You don't know who you can trust and who you can't. It's six weeks and you full around criminals. Criminals, convicts. Y'all know what we do on the streets. We lie, we thieve, we steal, we scheme, we scam, we fraud. We do everything that's on the list to get us our better interest. That's just what we do. So you shouldn't be telling no motherfucking body that you just went and, and took that shit from somebody for one. But for two, for two, y'all ass just showed up with a motherfucking radio and you ain't had one. And now everybody's looking at you like you just might have sticky fingers. So uh, Shorty goes on and tells people, yeah, she, she took it. She she got it from somebody. Somebody gave it to her. So she, she, it's hers now. She didn't get it from the pod. It came from outside of the pod. And yada, yada, yada. Like I said, this girl was young. She was dumb. That girl had a... I think she was there on a six-month sanction. Basically, she had caught a charge... They gave her a chance and they put her on probation or parole or house arrest. She violated, so they were sending her back for a sanction. That child didn't make it home. And I don't mean to smile about it because it's not funny somebody's kid lost their life. And this was a young girl. Like, that's the thing. It don't matter. Eight to 80, blind, crippled, or crazy. When you're in prison and you are in that fence, you are fair game to anybody. Don't think because, oh, I'm a woman, this male guard won't get me in a room and put his hands on me or do more to me because I've seen that done too and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about all the essays that I've seen occur in prison. We're going to talk about the women that I've seen lie and say that officers did it because they wouldn't do something for them or because they wrote it up. We're going to talk about the lawsuit that I'm in right now currently that you can Google about Vermont State Prison. We're not going to talk about the things that's going on with that. Right now we're talking about this child lost her life over being stupid, over stealing from somebody. So she, come to find out she went down there and she stole that radio. She got moved out of reception the next day. Moved her right into a pod where a radio had went missing. Now, when you buy something off commissary, if it's food, it's just coming straight to you. But if you buy a TV or an iPad or anything of value, a lock, anything like that, they engrave your number on it. Your inmate ID is engraved onto that with your initials. Sometimes your name, just depending on who's doing it. When something goes missing in a dorm setting, even in a, in a fucking room, a cell setting, when something goes missing, the first thing you do is you find out who's been in that area. Now, if it's a dorm and it's not a cell, you can't narrow it down. So now you're going up to everybody. If you're real about your shit and you really ain't trying to be played and took advantage of, you're going to go to every motherfucking body in there that you see. Hey, let me see that radio. Hey, let me see that radio. I don't give a fuck if you my bunk man. I don't give a fuck if you think we're cool because we've been hanging out all week. Let me see that motherfucking radio. I need to check that shit. Like, what's up? Now, I know y'all only seen me behind this little camera, but when I stand up, I'm five foot two and 160 pounds. My motherfucking shoulders are real wide. I look like a linebacker, okay? 
Most bitches don't play with me. I got some who test me. I've got some give me a run for my money. Some give me good fights. But most bitches don't play with me. So this person went up, found out this radio was stolen and was hers. Somehow, I don't know how that went down. But I do know the whole prison got locked down the next day. It's, it's uh, yard time, but not for reception. It's yard time for the bottom of the hill. Sirens going off, police running, radios tripping, like, click, 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 click. Hey, we need assistance, da 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 Like, they tripping. Everybody's like, what the fuck happened? We got locked down. Visitation just got canceled. The phones are off. What the fuck is going on? Well, one of the CEOs that like to gossip, spill the tea, she comes out, decides to tell us, uh, for all y'all new reception girls, some of these women in here been here 25 years and ain't never going home. They don't have much and the little they do have, they are worth losing their life for. So y'all need to be careful what y'all taking from people. So you know motherfuckers start gossiping, inmate.com's going off, this happened, that happened, da 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 One of the girls who uh, had to go up to medical at night to go get her insulin, so when she got up there, there was a life flight helicopter. A couple days going by, they clear the yard, we're able to go back out. Everybody's done talk by now, inmate.com's done pretty much got all the information it needs to know to know what happened. This girl got jumped by eight women. Most of them were not there for more than one year. There were a few who was doing a lot of time. That 18, 19 year old girl got slocked. Now, if y'all don't know what a slock is, it's a lock in a sock. She got slocked in her face and in her head by all these women while they jumped her. That woman had 100% brain damage when she was put in that helica helicopter and life flighter from that facility. They kept her alive until her parents got dead. And they pulled the plug on her how to make the decisions for that. But all that behind her stealing a fucking handheld AM FM radio. A clear radio and some headphones. Because what y'all don't realize, man, look, it's not always about what you stole. It's about the fact that you did steal. It's about the fact that you thought I was the one to steal from. It's about the one that you pretty much telling everybody else I'm soft and it's open game and fair season on my shit. Now it's about the fact that you're making me look like a straight bitch in here. It's about a lot of different factors. But another thing that goes with that, I try to tell people, y'all don't know what people are going through. You really don't. So y'all y'all try to test people and play with people like there's something soft just because, oh, you think it's funny, kiki kaka. Until that person really snaps on that ass and hurts you. Don't ever, listen, I'm from the city and I learned real quick and early in life, don't ever underestimate anybody. I done seen big, tall, fat, small, drop and drop motherfuckers. You don't ever know. You might think you can beat that boy. That boy might come back with a pistol. You don't ever know, man.